I was speaking with a couple of students of mine and I realized that I haven't really made a video about how I would actually tackle getting a job in animation in 2024, especially with the vision of me having so much experience in games and going through the ups and downs of the industry, some of the things that I would do today that perhaps I did wrong way back in the day. So this video is for all those that perhaps haven't really gotten a job just yet in animation or those that perhaps lost their jobs in 2022, 2023 due to unfortunate circumstances that are outside or, you know, they are not in your control, right? So I really want to do this to make sure that you start the year right, to make sure that you actually kind of like start the year with a bang. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, welcome to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. Happy 2024 once again. I'm, I know that I'm gonna be late and you, probably, you guys probably heard this many, many times, but I wanna say it once more because I have a good feeling about 2024. I don't know exactly why, but hopefully it's gonna be a year of great success for all of you. It's gonna be a great year of uh, many jobs and you know much happiness for everybody because uh, we need it after 2023 because it was an insane year. And um, I think we wanna put it back you know, behind us at this point and just move past and hopefully have better days ahead. First, I think it will be beneficial for me to kind of like give my perspective on how I would actually get, get a job in 2024, which is much different than early 2000s when I first got my first job. And also, um, I, I was actually talking to them and one of them is already employed and the other one hasn't gotten, gotten a job in animation just yet, but both of them suffer from the same problems where they actually kind of like are trying to speed through the process and trying to get into the industry or trying to get to a better job perhaps. And uh, this is a problem, a problem that many people have. So I wanna talk about that as well to make sure that you guys don't commit the same mistakes and you guys think a little bit more about where you are, where you're going, and some of the things that you can expect. When I was speaking with my student, social media came up and uh, social media is definitely something that you cannot dismiss it anymore. And I know that most of us animators are introverts and we like to stay in our corner behind the computer and just animate in the piece of, you know, the, that, re that animation reality that you have. However, it's no longer possible. And I miss those times where social media was not such a big thing. However, nowadays for many reasons, you kind of have to actually kind of like tackle social me media and make sure that you kind of like put your work out there, put yourself out there so people can start checking your social media. And also I made a video a while back about um, people stealing your work, right? And how that is detrimental for the industry, for your work. And part of that validation of making sure that the work is yours is knowing that the work is in social media for other people to consume, right? Because if enough people see your work, especially if it's a really cool piece of animation, then people will remember your work, but also they, whenever they check and maybe they don't know about your work, they will know that you posted this and this date on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. And it kind of gives you credibility yet again, right? So I think social media is something that you should tackle, that you should start to add your work to, doesn't matter if you're professional in the industry met with many years and never posted on social media, or if you're just a, you know, somebody that wants to get fresh green from like not working in the industry to working in the industry. I think both uh, cases apply, especially if you perhaps lost your job in 2023 due to all the redundancies and companies shutting down. I think now is the perfect time for you to start tackling social media, starting putting your work out there, start sharing your work out there, especially if your studio has closed and you can share the work and you have, you know, you're outside of the NDA situation, then share as much as possible to showcase some of the work that perhaps got lost in translation. I know studios out there that have been working on, th on, on projects for seven plus years, and yet the project gets canceled, shut down, and you cannot showcase any of the work. So it's a bit of a bummer. It's horrible for anybody that has worked on a project for that long not to be able to showcase any work whatsoever, because most people work during their work time. They don't really work outside of the work hours. And that's, that's the second part of the equation that I would say that 
based on the redundancies that we have right now, based on the fact that, you know, now there is actually less jobs for more people, you should absolutely work on your spare time on your animation. Doesn't matter if you haven't been part of the industry yet or that you are a veteran, but you just lost that job. I think now is more important than ever for you to put in that extra work in the evenings, every day for a certain amount of hours, because that extra work that you are putting in is showcasing to people in studios that not only are you the guy that worked in these games, if you are experienced, but you're also kind of like putting that extra work outside to mesh to make sure that you have specific shots that are not specific to a studio to a game um, and that is beneficial for me once again my experience is that when people i had many interviews over the years that when people see the fact that i do youtube on top of animation during the daytime on top of all these other things when i go to an interview a lot of the people go how do you go about doing all that in 24 hours because it feels like a lot yet if you manage your time correctly i'm pretty sure everybody could actually kind of like you know sneak in another four four to six hours of work if you do it well right still making sure that things are healthy and then you don't burn out very much but i'm pretty sure everybody could find that those extra four hours here and there even if it's like two hours and then dinner and then two hours or something along those lines it helps you a ton if you stop watching Netflix, stop watching TV and actually kind of like get your mindset into I need to get to a better place or I need to get another job. Um, this is the perfect situation to kind of like be to foster creativity and to get you out of being stuck in a specific place. Right. So I really recommend you guys kind of like act doing the extra work that allows you to then get that job. Plus, I'm a big believer that hard work the harder you work eventually pays off and that payoff is really as big as the hard work that you put in beforehand and sometimes you can put in that work for years and years and years and it feels like nothing is, is working out and eventually snap something happens and then all of a sudden boom you out there you got the jobs and everybody wants you so it really is a matter of being consistent with your work being consistent with yourself and just working just working all the time for your own sake, right? Like for your own sanity. And you're gonna feel so much better having that creativity, that output uh, that actually makes you feel at peace with your inner artistic self, right? So that is basically the work and how you go about it and how you go about applying yourself, right? Now, there is many job opportunities out there and I think that the best thing you can do in 2024, and I really think that there's not enough of them, is maybe start a YouTube channel. If you, especially if you're experienced. If you're experienced, perhaps try to actually share that experience on a YouTube channel, on TikTok, on Instagram, some way that actually kind of like gives you some traction online that people can start to recognize your name. Because the more people recognize your name, the more people want to work with you. Social media is interesting, especially YouTube, because doing this and talking to you guys makes people feel like they know you and they know the kind of person you are. And they also feel like you might fit within the studio because of the personality that you showcase in your videos. I know for, for a fact that many of the jobs that I got, including nowadays with my consultancy, is to do with the fact that I portray myself this way in videos and therefore people go, this guy will be perfect to work with us because of these reasons. And you guys should do exactly the same. Even if it actually doesn't uh, feel like you get the views or the exposition or whatever it is, you don't get thousands of views and thousands of subscribers. It's not so much about that. It's about you putting yourself out there and having the courage to kind of like talk or showcase or um, explain something in a way that makes sense that makes people go like this guy is making a lot of sense so let's talk to this guy or girl right so um, I think that's basically the main intent of you being here especially if you can do it to actually be outside and you know talking to a camera or you know explaining something uh, doing tutorials without showing your face without showing your personality becomes very like it feels like nowadays, at least for me, it feels like an old school thing to do, right? Having a Maya with no face, no personality attached to those videos is starting to become a little bit 
like of a disconnected thing. It used to be huge back 10, 10 years ago, maybe. Uh, but nowadays, you kind of have to put a person, a face to that tutorial so the two things can connect and then move forward. So if you decide to go that route, do it. I highly, highly recommend you doing it. I love YouTube for that reason. And I think we need more animation videos, more animation channels that actually kind of expose what we have. Because the more of us do this, the more exposure it gets, and the more exposure it gets, the more people do it. And then the industry becomes bigger. And then there's more opportunities and more jobs for everybody. Um, this idea that you need to actually pigeonhole yourself and, you know, not actually kind of like talk too much about it or have to actually kind of like keep things to yourself because there's only so many opportunities out there. I think it's never been a thing. I think people make it a thing. The reality is there's many jobs out there. As long as you're talented, as long as you actually kind of like, you know, portray yourself in a certain way, people will want to work with you and opportunities will come your way. Now, for all those, that are actually learning the art of animation, that are actually trying to get into the industry and all the young animators that are currently in the industry. Um, something that I picked up recently by speaking with my students is the speed in which you are doing things. The reason why I'm saying this is because there is a need or a want to actually kind of like rush through your animation so you can put a showreel together that allows you to get into the industry. And that's cool because, you know, obviously, you know, it feels from the outside, it feels like all the jobs are taken or there's only so much opportunities or there's a company that is advertising this thing specifically for the summer and you need to rush through it so you can get to the summer thing and apply and all these other things. And I can say this just basically looking at the experience that I had in the past is that rushing through your animations and rushing through the process of animation, especially when you're not very experienced, is detrimental to your skills. And you slowing down, slowing right down, and actually making sure that the process is correct, making sure that you're learning from it, making sure that nobody's putting pressure on you to do anything except for yourself, because this is a shot that you're doing for yourself, is super, super important. And I cannot stress this enough, because we, experienced people that have looked at many, many show reels over the years, we can tell when you're rushing through things, mainly because normally your timing and spacing is slightly skewed and things feel very fast and you don't give time for things to breathe very much, right? Or it feels perhaps that the animation wasn't polished enough or it feels perhaps that you haven't taken reference for this animation and you should have. Uh, things like that just basically signal that we, you just basically rush through the animation and you should have taken time. The result of that is that we think that you should take more time to then make your showreel better. So you rushing your showreel to apply for a place, especially if you know deep inside that is not ready, then it means that you probably will lose that opportunity and have to wait another six months to a year to apply again. So it doesn't really make give you any benefit. So slow down, make sure that you actually kind of like really let things breathe, make sure that you really understand the process of animation. And this is even more important for all those that already have a job and want to actually spend that extra time in the evening working on their shots outside of work, because you already have a job, you're already getting paid. Even if it's not in animation, at least you have that security net that actually allows you to then focus on animation while you are actually doing the day job, right? For all those that don't have a day job and only have time, a certain amount of time to actually work on their showreel, it's a bit more complicated because obviously you are in a state of um, panic almost. I, I certainly was for a couple of years that I need to make this happen no matter what. And then you start to rush through it. And that was my experience. And I think for the first year or two, I think everybody that saw my showreel, I can tell that when I look at my showreel, um, actually saw how much speed I was starting to add to my animations and that unconsciously, that translates to your showreel and then people can see that work, right? So this is why I'm saying for you to slow down and take 2024 to make it the year that you actually make that showreel really shine and make sure that people don't see that like lack of knowledge in your showreel because you took your time and you learn as best as possible. Having said all that, you can only give your best shot that you have at the moment, right? So 
there's gonna be a lot of things in animation that you perhaps don't know just yet because you need experience to know them. And timing, spacing, and there's a bunch of other elements in animation that are very abstract. It's very much like defining air that you need to learn only by experience, by repeating animation shots over and over again. So do your show reel to the best of your abilities until you feel happy with it. When you internally feel happy with your show reel and you're proud of it and you're proud so much of this work that you would show it to your friends. That is the showreel that you should, you should showcase to the studios out there, right? Um, don't submit showreels in the hope that even though you're not happy with it, you submit it and you're like, let's see what happens. And then you submit it, but you know deep inside that it's not great because if you think inside is not great and you're submitting it, then it means that you are actually kind of like um, already kind of like one step down for all the studios out there because if you think it's already not great then they are definitely going to think it's not great so keep that in mind that's all i had for you guys today and i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did and you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe like and as always comment down below tell me about your experiences and until next time stay well stay safe peace <laughs>